Good afternoon everybody. We're here to do a book review and it's going to be the review of Private Equity uh, 4.0 Reinventing uh, Value Creation which is, uh, can be found on Amazon for about 45 euros. And so let's get right to it. Okay, so here I've got the book in, uh, in front of me and we're going to say a few words just to set the stage. So the book says um, that it offers a balanced approach to the private equity industry. It's conceived as a timeless, unbiased investigation of the ways of the industry, it, that it's written in accessible terms, and it gives investors and observers a realistic insider's view into the intriguing and deeply misunderstood private equity industry and offers expert guidance. So let's, um, let's look into that in a little bit more detail. So the book is written by uh, three authors in this case. We have um, a professor, a practitioner, and what seems to be a junior practitioner stroke uh, entrepreneur. And it's quite common for some of these books on private equity to be written by a combination of uh, academics and, um, and others. And so who are these, who are these people? Well, um, Let's start with the first author, which is uh, Dr. Benoit Leleu, who is a professor at IMD in Lausanne, which is a Swiss business school, where he's director of the MBA program. Um, he specializes in corporate finance and venture capital, and he seems to be a career academic and has written a couple of other books on, on the financial subject, on financial topics. Um, He also runs executive education programs and it also says that he's involved with a number of private equity and venture capital funds. Although I don't really know what that really means when they say that an academic is involved with funds. Um, you know, as a fund manager, I don't know what that really means. I, I guess that doesn't mean a whole lot as it's a, an afterthought thrown there, in there as the, the last sentence, but, but certainly uh, the academic credentials might uh, will help in terms of research and, and rigor. Okay, and the second author is Hans van Svey, and um, he seems to be an NLP, a kind of fund of funds manager. He's uh, been with certain well-known names like Pictet, UBS, and he seems to be a veteran of the industry, uh, with a particular focus on the on Europe. UK and continental Europe and um, he also had some previous uh, experience before so clearly that's encouraging when you have somebody who's uh, from the industry although a bit more of an LP than a GP which brings us to the last uh, author which is Esmeralda Megali and she's wor been working since 2007 so she's obviously the, um, the junior in the trio and she's worked on some work, some uh, GP with Bill Gates Foundation. And uh, she's done a few different things in high tech. And she's a co-founder of a spin-off which develops nanotechnology. So she's involved in some of the new tech. Uh, and so uh, I don't know how much substance the company has, whether it's a little lab type thing or a big company but but obviously she brings in the um the junior perspective and probably did maybe more of the heavy lifting okay so um you know on the face of it, it's a promising trio i would say compared to other authors of, of other books so let's now go into the merits of the book one of the things i quite liked about this book and i'm just going to take the cover off so i can uh, work on it is the fact that they, they described it as private equity 4.0 which i think was a very good insight uh, because um, you can divide the history of the private equity market into four or five main cycles, and I think they, they hit that on the head. So what they describe as private equity 1.0 refers to the 1980s when we had the leveraged buyout funds that came into play, which were breaking up the large conglomerates. And then 2.0, as they describe it, is the 90s when we had another boom in the, in the in the market with uh, internet and mobile telephony, which was the 90s. We then had that uh, bust in 2000, the internet crash. And then we go on to private equity 3.0, which is the boom of liquidity, which started after the year 2000, which 
took us up to the financial crisis in 2008-2009. And then private equity 4.0, they're described as all private equity post-crisis, so something of a come back to basics, less financial leverage. So I think it's very interesting that they would call the book private equity 4.0 and frame the other cycles as 1.0 through to 3.0. What is disappointing is that they mention this in an introduction section, but they never really elaborate on it or they never really develop the idea, which I think is very interesting. So I think that's a disappoint one of the disappointments in the book. Let's now look at some of the, uh, the actual chapters. We've got um, a total of uh, eight main chapters and um, it's quite well put together. The first chapter is called Private Equity from Alternative to Mainstream Asset Class and this describes a little bit the his history of private equity and talks a bit about the different regions of the world, North America, Europe and Asia being, being the typical ones. It's a bit disappointing they left out some of the other emerging markets like Latin America, Middle East, North Africa and Central Europe. Uh, but it does a reasonably good job of giving an overview although they've put in a lot of um, statistics which tend to have a, a shelf life which expires because as the, the years pass the statistics get, get a bit out of date so they probably overdid it on the statistics and they could have done more on the insight side I would say so that chapter is I'd give it a good then the second chapter they call private equity as a business system and here they do a very good job of uh, really explaining the inner guts of the market, the workings of the market, how, how things work, what motivates people. Uh, and I think they do a pretty good job. I think the only thing that might be missing from this chapter is a, a good in-depth case study, which kind of uh, would cement or illustrate some of the points they're making here. I think a lot of the case studies they do have in the book are a little bit superficial. Um, probably they were written uh, with the consent of fund managers and others, and so they couldn't make it too controversial or critical, and I think that's probably one of the weaknesses of the book. Um, chapter three is called Value Creation in Private Equity, and, it, and they talk a little bit about how the value is created across different areas of private equity. Um, they touch upon, obviously, value attribution analysis, and so I think this is also a very good section, along with number, section two. Number three is also a very good section. Then we get on to chapter four, which is called Private Equity Performance, which describes the performance of the funds. And they, they bring in the usual um, questions that come up, which is that on average, private equity performs more or less similar to other equity asset classes. But the main difference is that the top quartile is extremely outperforming, which is the, the, the normal uh, received wisdom. And they illustrate that and discuss that. Um, they do quote quite a few studies, and I think that's one of the good things about this book, where you can see the, um, the touch of the academic, where they, they do quote all the main studies that have been made in private equity, and that's important because they tend to be intermittent and uh, different from each other and hard to find in one place. So it's good that they've uh, summarized all of these, and you can go and refer them. And so I'd say private equity performance is that um, it's okay, it's not very good. It could be made a bit more comprehensible, in my view. Chapter 5 is called The Main Characters in Private Equity, and this discusses all the main players, the type, basically the types of fund managers that are out there, divided by buyouts, expansion, venture capital funds, secondaries funds, funds of funds, mezzanine funds, and others. Uh, I think it's pretty good. I mean, they do a good overview. I think um, the two criticisms I would have of this chapter, which make it only kind of a good, okay chapter, is one, they, they spend too much time on the mega buyout funds, which are a very small part of the industry, not enough on the expansion funds. And they do present certain cases or presentations of different GPs. They strike me as a bit written by the public relations department of these GPs. They're kind of very, uh, not very consistent with each other and they're very all very rosy and positive. And there isn't much critical analysis, which is probably because they needed to make sure they didn't upset anybody, but that it represents a weakness in the chapter. So an okay section. Chapter six is called the supporting cast, which refers to the people in the ecosystem who are not fund managers. So lawyers, accountants, bankers, uh, other, other, uh, other consultants like me, for example, I'm a specialist private equity consultant and a former GP. 
Um, I think they do, it's an okay section, but they dwell too much on banks, a little bit too much on investment banks, and they should, could do more about explaining what some of these specialist consultants do, like placement agents or, or other types of specialists. So, so, so I think, but otherwise it's a good section. Then chapter seven is finally from the point of view of the investor. It talks about what it's like to invest in a GP, what are the considerations, what are the risks for any LP. Uh, and I think it's a very good section. Um, it's very well written and it gives it a good, from, uh, a good point of view of the investor. Um, the only thing I would suggest perhaps they, they should do a case study of the experience of going through a fundraising from the perspective of a GP and, 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 and some of the risks for the GP themselves. But otherwise, it's a very good section. Chapter 8, the final chapter, is called The Future of Private Equity. And I think it's, it's a very nice conclusion. And um, one of the reasons I think this book is, is very good is that it hits the nail on the head as far as what the essence of private equity is. And I'd like to read the, uh, a couple of sentences from the last paragraph, which goes following. Private equity deserves its place in the sun. Despite what the press would like to convey in general, it is made up mostly of boutiques with 10 to 100 bright, well-educated professionals with an entrepreneurial streak. And for me, that's GPs and that's private equity right there. Private equity is not about the mega firms, which are more like investment banks. It's really about bright people with an entrepreneurial streak, which they might not have in a corporate. And uh, those kinds of people that... <clears throat> That, that kind of a, a team of, of entrepreneurial people who are bright, highly educated, uh, is got the power to make a huge difference. And so I think, I think in that sense, um, it, it's a great chapter. Okay, so having uh, reviewed all the different chapters, let me try and summarize it a bit um, in some pros and some cons. So I think for the pros, we've got a book that's uh, it's well written. It discusses the problems and challenges of the industry in a very clear way. It looks at it from the point of view both of the GP and the LP, which is important. And it's extremely well researched and referenced. So those are some of the pros of the book. On the negative side, I think some of the cases are a bit too short and superficial. They could use a little bit more critical analysis or maybe a little bit of a backstory in some of the cases. Some of the technical parts of the book uh, the, the financial formula are terrible, they've been written very badly. You really don't need to put all these Greek letters there when you could make it much more simple. So I think there's a, a, a con on the, on the technical. And I also think that uh, they could have developed that very interesting concept of private equity 1.0 through to 4.0. And then finally, I think it would be nice to have a case study, a negative case study, because you learn more from that, as you know, if you're a private equity fund manager. And so a case study of a failed private equity firm would be very interesting, not necessarily just a barrage, which everybody knows about, but something, maybe a small mid-cap firm that collapsed because of some issues, and that could be more interesting. So finally, what would that, what's this book going to do for you? I think in summary, it's a great book. It's going to give you a, a deep insight into the private equity world. But you probably, if you're not a private equity person yourself, you're probably going to need, it, need to read it two or three times uh, before you really can assimilate all the concepts. So my final score for the book, it's definitely, in my view, a must-have. Okay folks, that concludes my book review. If you've liked the book, please, uh, and you like this video, please uh, smash the like button and please consider subscribing to my channel. Until the next book, goodbye.